My name is Rich Moore, I'm the UK Sales Director for the Resort Group PRC. Resort Group are based in Derby, East Midlands. Um, a bit about myself, for 15 years I was an independent financial advisor, um, so a bit of a different arena. Now, the Resort Group recruited me to build their pension division uh, about two and a half years ago now. So I came across from financial advice into the the perceived dark world of property development. And um, to be quite honest with you, it wasn't as dark as I thought. So the image of a property developer is changing, I feel, as we, as we go through the years in the UK. I'm gonna explain a bit about this property developer and what resorts have built and their ethos and, and obviously their offering. So, as I said, 30 to 45 minutes. The good news, I've got a great proposition for you. The bad news, you're going to have to listen to my Dorsey Brummie Tones for the next 35 40 minutes. So, guys, first of all, let's talk about where your current monies may be. In the room here, who has a cash ISA? Okay. Can you tell me proxy what returns you're getting off that? One, two percent, typical? Mm, yeah? yeah? Okay. Do you consider that a, a decent return? What's the cost of cost of living at the moment? Two percent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the point I'm getting at is um, the cost of living is eroding most of your returns there. Um, obviously there's a tax free element and that's why people look at these type of investments. Surely it's overall what return you're getting. Um, not a problem with cash ISAs. We all need emergency funds. You need to have it in your portfolio. However, um, you also need to look to diversify. The other ways of doing that through bonds. Um, bonds typically 3 or 4% maximum. And we've got other types of investment. Stocks and shares. Who's got stocks and shares in the room? Yeah, okay, so you use your financial advisors, um, you put your trust in them, and the money goes under management normally. Have you got any control over that at all? Marginal. Marginal, yeah. You've got marginal. However, if you wanted your money out at a certain point, what happened three or four months ago in China? Yeah, if you wanted your money out then, there's no way you could have realised your investment. It wiped massive amounts off the markets. So, there's a bit of a lack of control with stocks and shares. Again, it's good in a portfolio, you need diversification. So what are the alternatives for you guys? You've got weird and wonderful alternatives out there, but to me, a lot of them are untested and untried um, car parks, storage pods, gold, wine. A little bit of risk attached to this type of investment. What stands out there is property. All you guys are into property, that's why you're here today. So, type of property we've got, we've got a UK market, a buoyant buy to let market, however the government are doing their best to make it not so buoyant. As you know I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs, you know what's happening with the cuts, the, um, the offers on, on board for you now are limited, um, tax issues coming in, stamp duty etc. So. What are the alternatives now? We all should have a UK buy to let investment in our portfolio. However, what are the alternatives? We can probably look abroad now. The confidence has come back over the last 18 months. We've done many events around the UK and the shows are getting more and more buoyant in terms of numbers. People have got confidence again to go back into the overseas market. The returns are attractive in some countries. In Cape Verde jurisdiction, for instance, there is no income tax on rental. 
tax free. Government abolished it through our lobbying, lobbying as a developer. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, so, no tax. Obviously, if you bring it back into the UK, you would incur tax at your highest rate. However, there are ways of mitigating that and there are ways of having bank accounts offshore. Um, it's all legal above board. You can check it out with your accountant. There's no dual treaty for tax with Cape Verde. So you're going to have to declare it if you're not bringing it back in. Other benefits out there, we've got deposit accounts available between 3 and 6.8%. So we as a developer will pay you returns into that account if need be. We pay it to any account in the world. It doesn't have to be into a UK account. Overall, very low in terms of taxes. Um, the only tax you'd incur is not a tax, it's an actual legal cost when you complete on a property. However, there is other routes to investing with us and it's not by buying just a unit, you can buy a fraction of a unit. And all these units are obviously free whole purchases. Okay. So the type of property we've got, we've got commercial and we've got residential. Commercial could be units, could be shops, or we've got residential, you've got your buy to let, typical buy to let, terrace house, whatever, in the UK. We offer a combination, a touristic option, which is a, a hybrid of these two types of investment. Okay, so what we're offering to you is an armchair investment where you sit back and you get guaranteed returns and there's no management whatsoever. Okay, you also get a high level of capital growth. All of this is backed up by evidence, which I'll have to show you in a moment. Okay. Right, so our proposition is very different to what you used in the UK. It's driven by tourism. The key to returns is occupancy, and to guarantee the occupancy, you need to have key partners in place. I'm talking about the largest tour operator in the world, TUI, big German company, Thompson in the UK. Okay, you need a medium to get the tourists to the destinations. That's where we come in with our partners. Okay. When you invest, you're going to get the capital growth and you're going to get an income. You're also going to get a lifestyle element. Okay, so in your ISA, your stocks and shares investment, can you get any benefit from that? You can't, you just see it growing or you see it losing money, one of the two really. Okay, with us, you're going to get an investment return, you're also going to get the opportunity to go out there as part of the investment. Okay, I'll come on to that in a moment. Location, key factor, in proxy, Location is key. So here we're looking at the location where we're investing. We're looking at the seasons. Is an all year round climate? Can we go there all year round? Is there a demand? Is it going to be saturated in the future? Is it going to be another Spain, another Dubai? Is there going to be stability there? Is there going to be longevity? All of these are key questions. As an investor, you guys will be asking. So Cape Verde, let's talk a little bit about Cape Verde. That beach there is where myself and Robin were about a month ago. That's Santa Monica Beach, named after the Californian Santa Monica Beach. It's one of the top four beaches in the world. It's been voted by Atlantic Day. Pure turquoise ocean, beautiful beach. That is one of the um, the destinations for one of our resorts, or a Plan 6 resorts, which I'll tell you about in a second. So, Cape Verde, has anyone been to Cape Verde in the room? You have, madam, and whereabouts did you start? One um, probably to Cape Verde, uh, so it was about nine, ten years ago. Okay, so very, very early. <laughs> did you stay in um, a hotel resort? Mm -hmm. Can you remember? The Rui. The Rui, that's the first one that opened there, 06. Um, yeah, 06 or end of 06, I think. Yeah, okay. So that's a four star hotel, which at the time was one of the better hotels, yeah. Um, it's probably the 
that's Hotel Air No. 6. So Sal is here, and Bo Vista is a second tourist island. Two main tourist destinations, Sal and Bo Vista. Okay. The other major island is Santiago, where the capital of Cape Verde Praia is based. So there's three islands, but two main tourist islands, Sal and Bo Vista. You're looking for a beach destination, you're looking for sun on, you're looking for heat, you're looking for decent weather, and this has got all year round climates. So, I, when I was there, it was 30 degrees over Christmas, it's, it's almost 30 degrees. So, the high season is really the winter, uh, there's no low season because constantly tourists are going to the destinations all year round. So, why is it demanding Cape Verde? Cape Verde is obviously up and coming. Um, it's, I hate the word hidden gem, so cliche, but it is really. It's unspoiled commercially, it's very authentic. The people, um, the culture, it's a lot different to a lot of destinations in the world that have been spoiled, quite frankly, by commercialism. So, how do we get there? We get there by Flying there, over 23 cities in Europe, fly out from there, five in the UK, regular flights, direct flights, five and a half hours, flying from Gatwick, Birmingham, Manchester, Bristol, and Glasgow. Okay, you'll get there, and it's, it's an ex-Portuguese colony, so there's a nice little European vibe mixed with African culture. It's an independent country, it went independent in 1975. It's about 600 kilometers off the west coast of Africa and <coughs> about an hour south of the Canary Islands. Okay? So it's on the part of the equator where you don't get any rainy season or any storms. Um, it's a very, very lovely climate. That's interesting facts. When, when you flew to Sal, how did you get there? Did you go via Lisbon? Can you remember? Mm. Mm. <laughs> no? Well, <laughs> 10 years ago, you probably don't remember. But yeah. in, in 07, there was, there was no direct flights into these islands. You had to go via Lisbon a lot of the time from the UK. So you fly to Lisbon, and then that's Cape Verde. So in 07, no direct flights available. Now look, all, all around Europe, it's a very cosmopolitan feel on the islands. 25% of the, the tourist population is UK based, the rest is European, Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, there's a, a little bit from Scandinavia, and then there's a, a, a splattering from around the world. As you can see, we've got Brazil flying in there. Um, there was a flight from Boston in the US. Um, but they're all direct flights now. So the accessibility has gone through the roof. 07, no direct flights now. Gatwick's flying every day apart from weekends. So, tourism. You're thinking, right, what's the key to our key to returns is occupancy. We need as many tourists in there as possible. So how do we get to that? Well, what we do is we obviously look at stats, and stats are telling us now that the third quarter of last year there was over 400,000 visitors. There was almost a million visitors to Cape Verde last year. In 2006, there was 60,000. Would you consider that a a very fast growth or a very slow growth? Stretching points about the point. The, the tourism is going through the roof now. This is a great point. Saturation, could, could it be another Spain? Could it be another Dubai? No. The, the Cape Verde government are very careful on, on where they grant um, plots to build. We have beachfront land, um, limited. So we brought up what we could. And they protect the beaches because of the turtles laying eggs. 
Um, it's very environmental friendly there. There's whales, there's dolphins, and mates in the bay. Um, so ecological reports need to be done. They're very, very, shall we say, hot on the environment, which is great. So what that means is it's low-rise development. On the beachfront, you go to one story. Going back inland, you go to three story. There cannot be a concrete skyline cannot be saturation, the government won't allow it. Stability. Unfortunately, atrocities in Tunisia, obviously Egypt, horrific. Um, this country is a Christian, Catholic country. There's been, obviously, no terrorism issues. And Thompson and Tui flew all the people affected by that, and people go into those areas flew to Cape Verde, they stopped in our hotels. We had 100% occupancy for nearly two months solid over the last few months. Um, unfortunately, we have benefited from that. However, I think the key here is that it's a very, very safe environment. Um, to get out there, you've got to fly in. There's nowhere near you can fly in, or sorry, you can come in on boat. It's, it's far too far away from any islands. So to our advantage, we've got a very safe environment. Okay? It is the west coast of Africa, 600 kilometers. Obviously, North Africa have had the problems. It's nowhere near Africa. It's not an African country. It is a purely an independent country. Longevity. The Chinese have the fishing rights around Cape Verde. There's oil. Um, the US are involved in the oil. They put billions of pounds into the islands. The infrastructure, the airports and roads. Um, there's so much money going into it to, to develop it. It's, it's thriving at the moment. The resort group, we've put millions of pounds into it, obviously. Um, we've had build a college, um, we've built um, a school for the Cape Verde people. So our chairman is very popular out there, and fancy he's both the most popular person on the island of Cape Verde, over the Prime Minister recently. Um, we employ 80% of the population of Sun Island. So as you can see, we, uh, we play the part in our lives. That enables us to have a clear path for what we want to deliver for our clients in terms of we have no issues with building regulation, with land registry, there's no issues whatsoever with the build. Um, they in fact help us to build our resources as quickly as possible. Tourism is their main environment. Fixed in Cape Verde, the usual great family resorts, uh, fishing, scuba diving, water sports, uh, kite surfing, the World Kite Surfing Championships are held every February there. Um, it's just a wonderful natural place. So, checklist for you guys. <clears throat> it's all year round climate. Sunshine. Beach front. Safe and secure. Billions of pounds being invested. However, who's behind it all? Who is this company behind it? Um, I'm going to show you now the history of us in Canada.
this place is a free resort on the island of Sun. And Lana is due to open the end of this year. Which the third resort you saw in the middle of the other two. So let's talk about what we do. We build truly five star luxury resorts and they are all inclusive resorts. When I say all inclusive, some people have different experiences of all inclusive. All inclusive with excellent cuisine, premium fine wines, it's truly a first class experience. It's, um, it's a finer end of the scale and all inclusive. Okay? We retain the commercial areas in these resorts. So it's in our best interest to make sure that they're managed correctly and the resorts are high standard. We sell the units to private investors such as yourselves and the units are owned by private investors and we retain commercial assets within these resorts. The price points on these units I'll come to in a moment and I'll tell you exactly what your options are on, on ownership. But all ownerships are freehold, uh, name on the title deed, um, so they are true ownership of overseas properties. Okay. So our track record in Cape Verde, we are the, the largest developer in Cape Verde, and we've got two resorts operation at the moment. We've got Tatuga and we've got Junus. As I said, Lana is a third resort, which is opening next year, sorry, the end of this year. And we have started build on the island of Boa Vista. Our first resort on Boa Vista is called White Sands. And White Sands is the first of six planned resorts on Boa Vista. Okay, we're currently also building a business hotel on the island of Santiago in conjunction with Hilton and Wine. So we're in partnership with Hilton, we're the first developer to sign a JV with Hilton. Um, we're building a business hotel on their capital prior. Um, this island is more of a commercial in terms of um, commercial businesses meet there. They meet there for world conferences, etc., including the FBI, uh, the US governments, Chinese governments, and they needed a five-star hotel. We stepped in with Hilton to provide this for them. This hotel is not going to be sold to private investors, it is an asset for our balance sheet. So we're retaining the ownership on that island of that hotel. Um, but it's just one of the projects that we're, we've started in the last few weeks um, in conjunction with the Boa Vista project. So back to, to Sal Island. So Tuga opened five years ago. It's won many awards every year um, TripAdvisor World Leading Hotels of the Year. Um, average occupancy since opening, this is obviously all year around 74%. 74% is the average occupancy. And it's paid returns of 5.5% across the board. Many of the resorts are paid up to 10%. Okay? But we, uh, we have to set your expectations. Um, correctly in terms of we're not going to promise you the earth and deliver um, what you were expecting. So 5.5 across the board, I would consider a very healthy return. That is not in conjunction with the capital growth that these results have been showing. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the capital growth and how it's been measured as we carry on. Mili Junas, the second resort on the island of South. This is the largest in the African continent. It's a massive resort, over 1,200 properties. It's a five-star luxury hotel with many a la carte restaurants, champagne bars. Um, it's got over two acres uh, worth of freshwater pools. Uh, it's been ranked seventh best hotel resort in the world for 2015. And it was voted Best, best lifestyle resort in the world in 2015. It's won many awards this year. We're very proud of this hotel as it only opened obviously a year ago. And we've now built occupancy up to 80%. So 
So this hotel um, is a bit of a flagship for us. Uh, in terms of size, if you could imagine trying to phase in occupancy on, on, a, on a hotel of that size, we started off first quarter 25% occupancy, and obviously we built it up to fourth quarter 80%. So that's some going for a brand new resort. We could do that on our own though. We've, we've got key partnerships. Savills, Savills, who you all heard of, they value the resorts, they value the units. So we have annual valuations done. Deloitte's, auditors. So all our accounts are obviously uh, accessible online. You can view the company, you can view our financial strength. Group San Jose, very important part of our partnership. They've built all our resorts to date. They're a, a trusted developer, sorry, builder, a Spanish builder, um, turnover in excess of 1.3 billion pounds last year. So a massive company, and they've delivered our time for us throughout our builds. Then we have obviously the hotel partnerships. Our three resorts on sale are managed by Melia Hotel. Melia are one of the largest hotel resorts um, providers in the world. They're a massive, massive Spanish company. And of course, Hilton Worldwide, who we have a new partnership with on the business hotel in Praia. Hilton have just signed for our second resort on Boa Vista. So they are going to be the hotel manager on Boa Vista for our second resort, which I'll tell you a little bit about in a moment. Okay guys, so quality wise, I'm going to show you some images now. This was a, a computer generated image of Junus reception area. So when we were marketing this property, obviously we were showing CGI images. This is how we actually turned out. So as you can see, very high quality delivered. That was the front of the hotel, and this is how it uh, was delivered. This is one of the restaurants, again CGI, and that was the actual delivered product. And then the bedroom, CGI bedroom, and this was the finished article. So, as you can see, um, we have to deliver as good or if not better to the CGI images. Um, and we have done that consistently. So, us, we are um, a massive developer in terms of money. We valued at half a billion pounds. Um, turnover in excess of 110 million euros last year. Profit in excess of 28 million. This year just been announced. Um, significant projects uh, in the offing as we speak. We just purchased a hotel in Ibiza for 30, sorry, for 14 million pounds from um, the Spanish bank um, Santander. It was a distressed hotel. We just turned it around, had value at 36 million euros. Um, so we're acquiring hotels building our asset base, which is all good for you guys if you're coming into partnership, okay? Due diligence, massive if you're looking at investment. We have due diligence packs, we have uh, evidence of valuations, land ownership, um, titles, we've got all the certificates, environmental impact studies, we have all that available for you to view. So let's go now quickly on to the actual product itself. Ownership wise, you can buy four units at price points from £115,000. That will buy your hotel suite. In the bill of that, that suite and that resort, we're paying 7% net. So we pay 7% net. We have the development on sale, Lana, which is going to open next so the end of this year. We'll pay 7% up to the opening. And then you go into a rental scheme. The rental scheme will then pay you what the yields are producing. Okay, or 
5% as a minimum colour. So you guarantee the net 5% up to 15 years. So 15 years is a contract with many hotels. So for the ownership up to 15 years, you will be guaranteed 5% as a minimum. Our resorts are producing between 6 and 9%. If you like, it's a safety net to give you confidence going forward. We then offer you a resale option on these resorts, so you can come out in five years. Obviously, these investments are long-term strategies. Um, if you want to come out in two or three years, it's, it's, with any property, you're not going to be looking to go into an investment on it. However, if circumstances dictate you need to come out of that investment, we offer you a five-year option to come out in terms of we will market that through our massive distribution network. We have over 100 agents in the UK and Europe that sell our property. We have massive pension divisions that sell property through pension wrappers, such as SIPs, SASIs, QROPs. So we will sell your property off through one of those channels. In terms of sales last year, we generated 70 million euros. So obviously, we can sell your property for you. We're guaranteed to sell that for you at market value, minus any costs in terms of selling costs. So that could be up to 10%. Let me explain how that works. An agent may get commissions paid, and that may be up to 10%, and that will come out of the market value. Okay? That is from the point of buying it up to a five year window when you can exercise your rights. So if you need it to come out, it will be five year first option. Okay, guys? And what happens after five years? If you're going to come out, say after five and a half years? Yeah, you can come out any time at a five year trigger point. No problem at all. Um, however, as I, as I said, if you're looking for an investment five year maximum, this wouldn't be for you. Um, in my opinion, if you want to go into this long term, you've got a 15 year guaranteed return on this property. Plus, you've got capital growth. Savills predict between 3 and 6% per annum. That's been documented since 2011 when we built Tuga. Okay, when we first marketed to Tuga, we were selling them at 127,000 euros. We are now currently selling onto Tuga. There isn't any stock at the moment, but the last property we did sell was 225,000 euros. That's quite a bit of growth in five years. What was the selling price? 125. 125 to? 225. Now, if you were to look um, on websites, there is a few distressed properties on Tatuga that aren't in a rental scheme, that aren't um, with the correct furniture packs, so cannot get these returns that we deliver. Um, so they'll be sell, sell, sold at low prices, and there's a reason for that. Um, there will be only a couple, but if you're to look, being honest, you'll see them, but you need to look into it. Um, obviously, the last sale we had was 225, but that was to be the rental scheme, so you will get your returns in the normal way. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, just to recap then, we have two resorts available to you. We have Lana on sale which will pay 7% up to one year. And then you go to rental scheme where you receive a minimum of 5% net. Or we have White Sands, which is a first development on Bovesta. That will pay up to three years at 7% net. And then you'll go to the rental scheme of 5% as a minimum. Okay? Then you wanna have the five year resale option available if needed, be all required. Okay, guys, so Lana Beach, I'll tell you a little bit more about Lana Beach. 
opens end of this year. It's a luxury hotel suites. It will be a couples only hotel. And bearing in mind that's in the middle of two resorts that are family hotels. Okay? So if you brought on there and you wanted use of that, you had a family, you would have to have access to the other resorts. Okay? So you could mix obviously your investment up in terms of usage. They're pure luxury suites and there's duplex and normal hotel suites available. However, 92% of this resort is sold out now. We have some stock left. Uh, we have a range of garden suites and swimming pool suites. What we do offer to clients is we offer inspection trips. We normally charge a seven day all inclusive, all expenses paid trip for £750 which is cheaper than obviously you can get off the Thompson site or inclusive site. However, if you go ahead and reserve and buy, we take that off in deposit. 95% of people who go out to our resorts with an interest continue to purchase. We're that confident that if we can get you out there, then we blow away by the resort and you, you go ahead and you reserve. Okay, so um, what I'm looking to do today is, is offer something a little bit more competitive on, on that 750, which I'll come on to again. Okay. So Lana is one on the way in terms of build. This is interesting. This, this is called the Lagoon, which we've put on the beach, obviously going out to the Atlantic Ocean. It's going to provide safe bathing um, because the Atlantic sometimes, at certain times of the year, is big waves. So we found this, this is going to provide a bit of a break from the waves so you've got safe bathing. In the middle, there's a pier and on there we're putting a beach, bar and restaurant. There's going to be a pool area, obviously sunbathing, um, there's going to be cuisine and food, sorry, cuisine and drinks. Um, and then there's a lovely pit at the end there where you can get a boat into the town. Santa Maria is a town. Santa Maria is just around the coast there. It'll be a 10 minute walk from the resort, it'll be a 10 minute long boat ride. It's a lovely way to get in and out of the town. So that key you can see on the end of the pier is where you get the boat. Now that is due to be completed the first quarter, sorry, the, uh, the second quarter of this year. So by about April, May, that will be complete. As you can see now, that was taken about three months ago. So we're well, we're well on the way in terms of that development, which is going to be paramount to families. You can also see there that there's um, nice clear waters. That area there, there's some rocks uh, which are being covered by sand. So if you were to go out there now, you'd see the excavation going up, removing rocks and putting more sand into the ocean. So you can have a nice clear way into the ocean. Now the rest of the coastline is nice and clear, it was a box, it's just that particular part. So we had to remove those and make it even more, um, so we say user friendly for you and your families to get into. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful concept, as you can see there. That's a CGI of what it's going to look like. Nana Hotel. We've got a CGI video here, which I'm not going to play to you because it's seven minutes. So I'm just going to show you a quick minute of it. This is available obviously to you guys as links on websites, etc., to look at. Which just gives you an 
idea of their feel, what the hotel is going to look like. It's already on their site um, for next year. They've pre-booked and pre-paid 90% of rooms for three years already. This is their flagship hotel in Cape Verde. So we're really excited about this hotel in terms of what it's going to deliver. Uh, it's very difficult to deliver to in terms of it is couples only. And it is, in my opinion, just that little step up, if you can get that far, because if it's an excellent five stars, this is Julian the Crown for me on the island of the sun. As I said, there's still a little bit of stock left on that hotel. And the price points are from £115,000 up to about £199,000, depending on the type of suite. Okay, so the second offering we have for you is White Sands. White Sands is on Bo Vista. If you remember Bo Vista is the island down from Southern. So White Sands is going to be completed at the end of 2018. It's a family hotel with a mixture of villas, hotel suites, duplex apartments. So it's a lovely mix of property. Price points from 120,000 sterling up to 400,000 sterling for three bed villas. There is one, two and three bed villas. 80% um, of the villas are sold already. So it's, uh, it's been a real success in the first six months of launch. Um, there's duplex apartments available. And 80% of the rooms on this hotel have sea views. Let me show you why in a second. That is uh, CGI of the six planned resorts that were put on by Vista. So that's White Sands, there's Hilton next to it. So the Hilton is the second planned development, which is starting a year after the Boa Vista um, White Sands project. Okay, you can see a marina there, and in total there'll be six resorts on there. We have letters of interest from Radisson, Steinenberg, um, one and only, and a few other big conglomerates, European type hotel resorts, that want to manage the resorts on Bovista. That's how the White Sands Hotel is going to look. And our chairman, just recently did the groundbreaking event with the Prime Minister of Cape Verde, this gentleman here. Um, they've put the flat down, they've started building the roads as we speak, utilities are going in, the bill is well underway. This guy here is standing on what is a gradient down to the, the beach in the ocean. That gradient has enabled the architect to make sure that 80% of the rooms have got sea view. Uh, Robin stood on there with myself. Uh, it's a spectacular. 17 kilometers of stretch of beach. Absolutely beautiful. So, <coughs> the ocean. I was there in November, I walked in the ocean and it wasn't cold. It, it, it was just a lovely temperature. Um, the actual beach is stunning. The views are unbelievable. The backdrop is a mountainous region. It does remind me a little bit of African feel. It's just an absolutely beautiful view all around. Pan panoramic room views. Do they have snorkeling and things like that? Yes, they do, yeah. It's world class scuba diving there. I'm a scuba diver myself, and uh, it's just fantastic. The shipwrecks, 
Yeah, but it's not too far to, to apply. There's, there's, there's trips, there's um, obviously uh, water sports uh, companies there that offer the organised trips. So you've got dive buddies. Um, so yeah, snorkeling is super great for kids. My daughter loves snorkeling and the sea diving for the kids as well. So yeah, definitely. This, this is a uh, As I said, um, the villas are 80% sold out. And the reason for that is, is on that gradient where they're going to be is the most stunning views of that stretch of coast. As I said to you, Robin and myself are on there. Um, I've actually put my uh, hard earned cash into um, a unit on my sands because I was at impressed by it when I first saw it six months ago. Um, I was blown away by the actual stretch of coastline there. So, yeah, White Sands is going to be spectacular. What, so, what's the rest of the island like? It looks Good question. Deserted. That side of the island is actually the southwest. Where there's hotel chains on the east coast. And there was a town there. It's such a small island, it's 25 by 18 kilometers. So you can almost see the ocean from where you're standing to the other side of the coast, so from west to east. It's, it's just magical. But there is obviously the hotel, the hotel chains along that east coast stretch. But we have that, that side exclusively. We've got six plots planned. Um, there's no other prime beach front land available there. Um, the road networks are probably about 15 minutes from the, the town. There's taxis, it's not going to be an issue. It's because it is a small island that it just looks so remote and you're thinking, is anyone else there? It is a main tourist destination. 40% of the tourism goes to Bavista. The size of the town in comparison to uh, Santa Maria. Good question. Santa Maria um, has changed a little bit from when you went there. It, it's still a very quaint town, but it has many excellent restaurants, steak and fish restaurants there now. It has lovely bars, and music bars. Not music bars in terms of Costa del Sol. I mean live music bars, authentic bars. Um, the actual town of Bona Vista is very similar to um, Sal. Um, the only difference I'd say is that hotel-wise, there's a few more hotels on Sal. So 40% of the tourism goes to Bella Vista, 50% goes to Sal, 10% goes to Santiago. Direct flights are into Bella Vista, and direct flights are into Sal. 
So all those flights I showed you, they're available into both islands. There's no island hopping, plane wise. You're directing. Okay. So, what do you want as an investor? You want a developer uh, who delivers. You want someone you can trust. You want someone with a track record. You want five-star luxury. You want somewhere that people will book to come back to year on year. You want award-winning resorts. And you want first-class resorts. You want guaranteed returns. You're going to get a minimum 5% net in the rental scheme. Um, judging by Lana, 90% occupancy um, or in terms of rooms being brought up by Surrey or Reddit for the first three years is a massive sign that they're very confident. Um, so as an investor, you must be very, very confident that that's going to deliver for you that result. You want an exit strategy, a resale option. If you have an issue, five years is the first trigger, you can come out. If you need to liquidise your assets, you can come out that way. And you want someone who's deli delivered before, who to two is delivering, Julius is deli delivering. You need, you need guarantees in terms of what we can do for you. You've seen the results, you've seen what we've delivered, uh, you've seen the financial strength of the result group. You've also seen what returns we're paying you. So, there's various options available. You can obviously go out and see the results. We have a very non-intrusive um, way of showing you around. You go for seven days, you get shown around the resorts for a day. Um, it's very um, soft and subtle. No hard selling, but not a top company. You'll be shown the resorts, um, you'll be taken to the town, you'll be shown around the restaurants, and you can have a chill time as well as obviously doing your research. So, we offer that treatment at $750 normally. To you guys, we're going to offer it out at £600 for a seven day all inclusive trip. Um, what we would expect of you would be over the next 14 days through Robin and CHG is £150 holding deposit. We've got dates in February and March, but we can accommodate you going forward up to May at the moment. Um, so I would urge you to get out there and have a look. I would also urge you to have possibly, I know I've probably droned on for the last four or five minutes, but a one-to-one -one with myself or one of the team. Um, we have resources to come and see you at your place of work or your home. You can do a one-to-one -one with more detail. I would not want to drone on about detail in this seminar. Um, I know you guys have only got a certain point for retaining information. I could go into more detail on a one-to-one -one meeting. So you've got a couple of choices here. If there is an interest, please speak to us at the end of this seminar. Um, you know, you can subtly pursue it, or you could really go for it and go, go yeah, I'm gonna go out and see it. Not a problem at all. So guys, just to reiterate, there's two resorts. We've got information in the packs and the APC there. The returns <coughs> are 7% guaranteed netting build. This is net of all costs, there's no income tax power on this. It's a capital return from the developer, so there'll be no tax at all, 7% net. Where, where can you get that type of return? You then go into the rental scheme when it opens up the resort, and you will get a minimum, as a color of 5% net payable. Again, I said to you that you can get these returns paid into any account in the world. So you don't have to bring it into the UK. It's perfectly legal and the board will speak to your accountant about it. It's not an issue at all. And also, you've got the exit strategy now. You can come out at five years. You're going to go into a marketplace 
with the marketing power of a big conglomerate. Where can you get that on a property investment? Who can say to you that you bought the buy to let? And you're going to say it through a massive network, a massive channel overseas. It doesn't happen with overseas property. It's the, yeah, it's the life of the contract with the hotel manager, uh, the mega hotel, yeah. signed 15 year contract with two five year options on top, so 25 years. Um, you have the option though guys to come out of that contract with three months notice. So if you wanted to come out uh, because you wanted to go and stay there and all your family, you know, use a holiday home properly as a holiday home, you can do that, you can exercise the right to come out and you can go back in. Yeah, three months notice. Not a lot of people have done that in our history, but um, that is available to you. Now let me just quickly tell you, on usage, if you buy a full unit, you get five weeks per year free usage for unit families. If you buy half a unit, you get three weeks per year. And if you invest as little as £40,000, you get one week per year usage. Okay, this is just an optional thing that you can do. Um, which is part of the lifestyle benefit we offer on our investments. As I said to you though, don't get confused, this is um, a freehold property purchase. Okay? It's not anything to do with timeshare, your name is on a title deed, it's a proper purchase. The fact that you get usage is just a, a benefit, it's a bonus to you. Okay? So if you go into a 50 50 or somebody else, both of your names are on that. Yeah, the separate company set up with you as a director, and neither person as a director. It's called fractional ownership. Um, there's a lot of information about it in the, in the pack there. Fractional ownership companies uh, are set up for this type of purchase. It's, it's been around for 10 years. Um, you can check it out, obviously, do your due diligence, but it's a very popular way of owning um, half a unit and getting the benefits of your own home. Plus you've got the guarantee returns. As I said, it's an armchair investment with a little bit of usage for you and your families. So 50% ownership, you get three, three weeks. weeks. So what was the other one? Less than that. Less than that. £40,000 £40, investment would okay. trigger one week per year. Yeah. Okay. Obviously the company won't want you in for the three weeks because the busiest time of the year. Yeah. Good question. There is um, peak times or high season, low season. Um, for instance, with the five week option, you get two weeks in peak and three weeks in off peak. Now, the off peak though, uh, remember it's all year round sunshine. So if you've got children, you may want to go on school holidays. We can fit you around obviously in two weeks, summer holiday peak time. It's not a problem at all. And you can fit yourself around any time of the year. Being honest, um, our clients, two weeks per year is enough for them, so that's fine. The other three weeks we go out to friends or family. But you don't have to stay in your villa, do you? you can no, stay not at all. Not at all. You can stay in a life for life villa or, or apartment. So how it works is if you buy a particular type of property, you can stay in any similar type of property in the resort. You don't have to stay in your own unit. Some people like to know. It's, it's up to how you want to do it. We're very flexible with that. Um, it depends on your views. For instance, if you brought a unit which is by commercial area, so you buy restaurants or, or whatever, you, you didn't particularly want to stay there. If you could stay by a pool because you've got a family. Depends on your choice and taste. You can stay where you need to, um, as long as obviously you give us three months notice and we will come down with that one. And can you change the results? Yep. As I said to you, Lana is going to be a couple's hotel. So if you purchase on Lana and have a family, you can stay in Junis, or Tatuga, or eventually White Sands. Well, I'm a bit confused about Lana. So Lana is a Adult only. Yes. So why does it have children's pool and mini club area? I'm 
absolutely great question. Originally, originally it's going to be half adults, half um, family. Then what happened was, as it progressed and, and the, the resort evolved, Tui came to us and said, look guys, we've got two fabulous family hotels on the side. We feel we need to mix this up and change it. You need to advertise it as adults only. If you do that, we are going to pay up for, for three years 90% of the rooms. That's why we did it. It's going to be far more effective for our investors by taking up that offer. Obviously then we brought in the option of you taking your families to any of the resort that we own. The feedback on that has been excellent. Obviously initially the marketing came out with the half and half concept. That's why it's been in development since 2012 when we started to uh, market. Robin, can you think of anything um, that's pertinent to the investor that I need to uh, Well, look, I think the media that we run the results of that got a fantastic reputation. I mean, I haven't heard from before, so I've met myself, but when I spoke to people, they run uh, similar things in America, don't they? They've got hotels in London. Uh, they've got a fantastic reputation. Yeah. Um, so that uh, helped me when I was speaking to people. As soon as I mentioned that name, yeah. people wanted to say, yeah, I'll go out there. I've got full confidence that those people run the uh, results very well. Um, obviously, your, you know, Thompson's a, uh, I know, partnered with you, and you've got a fantastic reputation with them. And also, the thing that I liked is you've got some pictures there, haven't you? Of me. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. The um, most important ones. I, I know this has been a little bit stayed. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I want to light up <laughs> the room now. Let's light it up with Mr. Ryan Pilly. Yeah, yeah uh, you can see. And there's Tatiana. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely Tatiana. We've got into the culture quite quickly there. Yeah. Uh, what I liked, because um, I've been on all the before and it was um, you know it, it's nice a lot of people like all of that cost but I didn't feel it was a different experience because it was totally genuine five star um, I mean Tatiana is incredibly high standard so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was worth taking her along so but as soon as she turned up and the shampoo paid me into her uh, hands and we actually went into our room and also the restaurants um, it's not great. No, yeah. the, the, the restaurant's food quality was the, the, the wine list blew me away. Um, yeah. With my family, what I look at is the food and the drink uh, on the resorts. And uh, when I first went out there, there was proper wine lists with you know, all imported, obviously. All, all the food and drinks imported. Um, but we had proper um, wine choice, not just house, house, house wine. Proper wine choice and full wine list. Um, of excellent fine wines and had proper a car dining, which was world class. We had lobster, steak, we just had all the way. Yeah. I mean, what's different? That's obviously just uh, that's in the town on the beer. Yeah, we're not in the town. Well, they're just um, putting the putting the patches in for the day. It's wonderful to see that happen. The other thing was that I liked the fact that they offered a free bus into. Yes, yeah. twice a day. Yeah. Day so again, sometimes all inclusive you're restricted to the location. And I was speaking, you know, to the, your the sales person, Dave, and Belgium agents have done yeah. very, very well. Yeah. And, and uh, that actually increases the investment uh, for the investor because I was thinking, well, why are you paying for big works to come off the resort? But of course, when they're not in the resort, they're not eating there. And of course, they factor in how much people are going to eat and drink, etc. So, when people choose to go outside, they actually save money. So, it's all quite clever, but also for the person who's staying there, uh, you feel they're not restricted. You get to sample the culture there, and it's a yeah. wonderful culture. The people are lovely people, they're like the Caribbean people, if you've ever been to Barbados or anywhere like that. Very laid back people, smiley friendly, um, just a lovely vibe. Uh, the lovely Tatiana again. Dancers there, and then a bit of a car. 
restaurants as well with your families. So if you do want to go go into a sit down meal environment with your kids, which is perfectly you know, normal. Because buffet restaurants are quite standard of food still. So, you know, spices is a big buffet restaurant there. Yeah. Take the kids in. And then you can treat yourself a few nights go in the, the a la carte. Um, still children in there. So it depends how, how comf confident and comfortable you are with your kids. You know, it depends what I like. So, um, I think well, that's it for your photos, Robin. Yeah. Great question. Uh, second week in December, I was looking for a few clients of mine, and there was from Gatwick a return flight for two hundred and seventy-six pounds, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Um, last week there was a flight for about two hundred and eighty pounds return. Yeah. From Gatwick. Gatwick is the cheapest airport to go from. I'm from Birmingham, obviously, mm -hmm. and Birmingham is a little bit more expensive. And who's that flying with? That's with um, Thompson on the Dreamliner. The Dreamliner is a big, bigger aircraft, big leg room, lovely leather seats. Um, so the standard seats on the Dreamliner are lovely. Um, and Gatwick is, is the best airport in terms of frequency and pricing. That, the Watson prices at Christmas are for £800 return, but that's last minute, and that's from places like Birmingham and Manchester. Which is a, they fly two, three times a week. Well, that's summer holiday time, which is going to be peak, peak time in terms of values going. Yeah, peak time. Obviously school holidays um, are peak times, and Christmas. Um, the school so, holidays, you're saying, it's going to be about 800? Oh, no. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm talking about Christmas time. Yeah. It's 800 pounds. So, do you know what, roughly August? Like? Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's about getting the flights at the right times. So, if you're booking in advance, you're looking probably 300 pounds okay. to 500 pounds, depending. But, obviously, if you were going over there as a, as a family, um, You'd need to look at it closely and speak to us in terms of let's let's have a look at the Tully website, the pricing, compared to what we can get it individually, and we'll have a look at it and it make sure it work for you. Um, but you need to look in advance at least two, three months for flights, in my opinion. Or you can get lucky. I will say though the flights now have come on dramatically. Uh, and they are getting cheaper. It's like anything, isn't it? Um, so let's hope they keep coming down. Any other questions from the floor? This is, there is a question about your known, um, I guess your known level of development that is happening with other developers on both those islands. Because yeah. the, is it Boa Vista, White Sand? Yeah, it looks very open. There's the sun on the east. But what other developments are you aware of? I'm sure you're sort of the only company that's looking at both of these islands. No, the, who else is, who else is? it's a good question. There, there isn't anyone else. And that's that's the reason why. Um, there's a few small developers that try to, to purchase speech from land and they couldn't get it. So they put the resort, which is uh, I don't know, about 500 metres back from the coastline, and it wasn't front line. And they ran out of money in 08, 09 when the crash happened as an Irish developer. It was since finished and then it's actually let out to employees. So that is inhabited there. Um, developer wise, there is Hilton out there who've got a, uh, their own venture on sale. It's a 
they're putting a, a Hilton Hotel and Cell, which is great as well, because we're the only five star developer out there, there's no one else. And Hilton putting a five star, which is excellent because they're obviously partners of ours now. Um, on Boa Vista, um, there is one of the five star at the moment. We're putting six five stars on there. The tourism increases um, and the fact that all these massive conglomerate chain hotels are putting the letters of interest into us means people can see that this is really growing this top top part of all in terms of investment. Um, so if you're coming in now you're getting in at the right time in terms of it's still very very competitive in price compared to other parts of the world. If you you're looking at a one bed villa on White Sands um, you're looking at 299,000 euros for a villa, private pool, garden. Can't get that on any developments in, in the rest of the world from, from our research. Um, not we've got guaranteed rental scheme built in place and armchair investment products as it stands. Guy, say any from this side? No? Right, I'll um, obviously I'll wrap this uh, presentation there. Thank you for putting up with me, uh, Dorset Tones, etc. Obviously, I'm going to be in the room. We're going to have some refreshments, a drink. Rob will be here. Matt, my colleague at the back of the room. Anything you can think of. Um, if you want to speak to me individually, uh, no problem. But I do urge you to, to look into this a little bit more. Um, and so what would you say about the inspectors and trip you can do? Yeah, six hundred pounds, um, fourteen day from now. If you could show a commitment to one hundred and fifty pounds to Robin's company, well, we we'll do it for six hundred pounds. Obviously, if if you do purchase a fraction or unit, well, we're not going to offer price. We're giving you money back. Fractions start at ten thousand pounds, by the way. Yeah. Ten, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a reminder. I was thinking I can't even ask me. Yeah, ten thousand pound is a minimum price point to start. So ten thousand pound upwards. Forty thousand pound triggers the one week free use usage for you. Itself. Okay. Okay. The all inclusive, um, you can use it or you don't have to use it. Right. Um, so you can go South Cape and you can go you use any of the facilities in the town. Um, but you can buy wristbands. Um, wristbands start at 30 euros a day up to 65 euros depending on your type of premium package. Um, but that's unlimited drinks and food per day. And it's Exquisite quality. It's it's very competitive. It's very cheap, um, and you can purchase that every day if you want. You don't have to buy a block. You could buy a week block, or you could buy a daily bank wristband. You've got free use of all the facilities there without purchasing wristbands, obviously. Um, so. so that's on any purchase that you have there. So whether it's fractional or yeah. it's not non. -intuitive. instance, if you look at the types of property, it would be very expensive if you were trying to get a family into a villa for the week. If you've got free use of that villa, it's a very cheap holiday going forward for you and your family. Um, as you know, your families, flights, all-inclusive holidays, all-inclusive is a way to go with a family in my opinion. Yeah, I think we've uh, no, Thank you for listening.